if we begin with worship, ascribing worth to him, we're less likely to do what James warns us about. James says to us, you have not because you ask not. That's the, well, did you pray about it? Well, no, it's not that important. Did you pray about it? In all things, prayer. Pray without ceasing in every situation. Then he says, okay, you have not because you ask not. You ask and have not because you ask amiss. You ask in the wrong way. You ask because you are asking just to consume something by your own desires. This is what I want. Oh, it might not be something sinful, but it's, it's what I want. Lord, what I want. I figured this out. I've got this whole situation together. This is how you should provide for me. I, I, I love doing this kind of work. And I made an application to this particular company. So, Lord, give me this job. Got it all figured out. Lord, I'm praying for this job. Wait a minute. That's your desire. Is it God's desire? Is that his leading or is that your directing? You see, when we start first recognizing our position, we're less likely to start making demands of God and more likely to pray like Jesus prayed in the garden. Do you remember he was asking for something that God wasn't going to give him? He said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. You see, there's nothing wrong with laying out what's genuinely in our heart because we don't want to be false before God. But we need to acknowledge who he is and who we are before him so that we are asking according to his will. This is where the bending of our will to his shows up instead of our bending his will to ours. Ask, absolutely. Don't ask amiss. How do you do that? Well, recognize who you are before God first. Then the third one, we have uh, ascribe, ask, and act. Act? Yeah, act intercessory prayer, interceding, the prayer on behalf of others, interceding. What, what, what's that word mean, to intercede for someone? Well, if I'm going to intercede as a pastor, I'm asked uh, a number of times, have been asked a number of times, to intercede in a situation between maybe a man and, a, and his wife maybe between child and parent, to intercede. They're struggling with something. Maybe they are in conflict with one another. I say, Pastor, can you intercede for us? Can you step in the middle of us and give us some wisdom? And in some cases, keep us away from one another until we can work through this stuff. Interceding, it's stepping right into the middle of things. This is the warfare of prayer, intercessory prayer. Because here's what you're doing. In intercessory prayer, you are stepping right into the fight between a saint and Satan. Between a saint and Satan. This is the wrestling with principalities and powers. Not only our own struggle in the flesh, flesh against spirit, God gives us that strength. But this is going on the offensive, and this is saying, I will stand in the gap between this saint and Satan. Notice I picked a row where nobody's sitting over here for <laughs> Satan's row. <laughs> Interceding. And so because of that, you know what? It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight. And it's not going to be that put up your Duke's fight. It's going to be different. It's going to be, okay, Lord, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to start praying about this situation in, in my brother or sister's life. And wow, where did that thought come from? Why, why did I think, boy, I haven't thought about that person for years. Boy, I wonder what they're doing now. Gosh, you know, maybe I ought to call them. Wait a minute, I was supposed to be praying. Okay, that's right. Prayer. Okay, Lord, 
really want to intercede for this brother. But you know, the laundry, I think, I think the laundry is done in the dryer. I'll go change the load and then I'll come back to this. No, no, prayer is more important. Okay, Lord, really want to help this saint. Lord, I really, really ask that you move mightily in. Is that the phone ringing? Is that my cell phone? That's the kind of stuff that will happen when you are in prayer. Have you noticed that? Have you ever, have you ever noticed that there is no convenient time to pray? There isn't. There's no convenient time to pray. You've got to put something else out of the way because in our time-crunched society, we've got to use every moment for something or we're wasting our time. Or we need to multitask. We can't just do one thing at a time. We need to do two or three t things at a time because we don't want to miss anything. And that includes that time when I just need to chill out. I just need to relax. I need to do nothing for a while. And in doing nothing, you're doing something which is not praying. I don't think I got the negatives right in that statement, but I think you know what I mean. There's no convenient time to pray. It will always be inconvenient and something will always interrupt, whether it be in your mind, whether it be in the, your surroundings. I got saved in a Pentecostal church and there's an expression that was used in the Pentecostal church in those days, which is to pray through. I need to pray through about this. I love that expression. It says something. It says, well, wait a minute. I'm not just going to go out there for the fight and go uh, and then walk away. No, I'm praying through. I'm going to keep fighting. I am going to persevere in prayer. I'm going to be like Epaphras. I'm going to labor fervently in prayer. I'm going to use these weapons of my warfare. I'm going to use prayer, not just to fight back Satan and keep him back far enough in my own life so that, okay, I'm, I'm holding the line, okay. But I'm going to go out there. I'm going to take some territory. I'm going to go out there and take it. Now, not in a prideful way, because remember how you started. You are God's servant. You are his workmanship. But Paul said in our passage here today, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Wow. That's, that's, them is fighting words. Those are strong words. Be strong in the Lord and take back what the enemy is trying to take. Intercessory prayer is not judging another person's actions, but is stepping in to fight with them. Lord, I pray that you'd really help that guy because he's really screwed up and I don't know why he's made all those stupid decisions. Lord, have mercy on his poor, stupid head. Come on now, you've prayed maybe not those exact words, right? And especially when you're praying with somebody else because you don't want them to think that maybe you agree with what this person did. When you step into a fight that somebody's in the middle of, in the midst of, and you've chosen a side, you don't step into that fight and go, you know, you're really stupid to be doing this. No, you stand arm in arm with that person and you fight. And then maybe when it's over, you can talk about why would you pick on that guy that's three times your own size? But not in the midst of the fight. And in prayer, we stand with someone. No matter what they have done, where they have come from, what's going on in their life, how stupid it was that they could get into that kind of situation. Gosh, I would never do that. Nah, that's not the place in prayer to be even thinking about those things. But rather, it is standing with them. 